Liberty Patriot cheerleaders. Operation Football is next. Break it down for us, Brian and Jesse. Woo! From the News 3 studios, this is Operation Football, powered by the News 3 Station Casino Sports Desk. All right, Liberty Cheer, it shall be broken down. Yeah, I like it, man. <laughs> yeah. Every week they just keep hooking us up. Buddy. I like it. Hello, <laughs> welcome to Operation Football, the very best high school football show in Las Vegas, as voted on by Ray Brewer from the Las Vegas Sun. And the young junior Arbor View cheerleading squad, Jesse Merrick, Brian Salmon, thank you for joining us. Oh, yeah. Hey, those are some pretty good people giving us votes there. No, I, I like that. Yeah, Folks, they yeah. love the show, of course. Tough to beat that. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, without further delay, let's check in with Amber Dixon, who's been on a good streak of very competitive games of our Games of the Week. Tonight, it's Faith Lutheran at Arbor View. Two top Northwest League teams. And Amber, was the game as advertised? You know, it was a tale of two halves with Arborview dominant to start. Faith Lutheran putting up a valiant fight in the second half, but ultimately falling by a touchdown. The defending Mountain Region champion Arborview Aggies scored on their very first drive, a 26-yard touchdown run by senior running back Darius Williams. And later in the first quarter, the Aggies on the reverse would get the ball to senior back Daniel Mitchell, who'd head to the sideline, turn on the Jets, and go 74 yards for the 14-zip Arborview lead. The Aggies led 17-3 at the half. But second half, the Crusaders mount a comeback, trailing 17-10. Faith Lutheran QB Grant Wood with an 18-yard strike to Keegan Bunn. That set up a five-yard game-tying touchdown run by Marcos Canales. Fourth quarter here, game still tied at 17. Arborview ball and the Aggies handed off to yet another senior running back, this time Justin Hausner, who takes it to the house for what would be the game-winning score. Arborview wins 24-17. You scored the game-winning oh, touchdown. Yeah. What did you see on that carry? You know what? It, was, it was a good play, man. It was, you know, it was wide open. You know, we went to our strengths and we just focused on it and. Overall, you know, I'm just happy we got the win, man. That's all that matters. And then the three touchdowns tonight scored by three different senior oh. running backs. What can you tell me about the division of labor on this You know team? what, man? I love my guys, man. We we work in grinding. We grind every day. We've been doing it since we were in eighth grade, man. They're my boys for life. I love it, man. And you know what, man, this is a matchup that we could see again in the playoffs. In the meantime, Arborview has a bye week and up next for Faith's Lutheran, they face Shadow Ridge. Reporting live from Arborview High tonight, I'm Amber Dixon. Back to you. Hey, thanks, Amber. Now we'll keep it rolling with the 4A Mountain Northwest Division. Head on over to Palo Verde High School. That's where the Panthers were hosting the Cimarron Memorial Spartans, who were looking to snap a three-game losing streak. And early on, it looked good for them, especially when Jordan Norwood busted out the track speed on them and left the Panthers in the dust on this 21-yard touchdown scamper to give the Spartans the 6-0 lead. From there, it took a while, but after a field goal, Palo got it rolling. It was all thanks to Sharon Thomas off the toss to race the goal line. But this kid has starred on the show before. You know what's going down. Touchdown, Thomas. That'll be his first of two in the first half there as Palo takes an 18-6 lead into the break. And after the kiddos got their orange slices, the Panthers picked up right where they left off. First drive off the second half there. Ooh, look at Myro Paul Myro the lofted it up to Amir Magruder. And 46 yards later, cash the check, Palo's up 24-6. And that Magruder kid wasn't done because he's oh, really wow. McGreedy, taking things right there, like, you know, stealing things that ain't his. Give him another pick, another one there on the pick six. And as Palo slams the door shut real quick to take this one 43-6. Wow, they squeaked out that victory there, Jesse. Now two teams looking up at Cheyenne in the 3A Sunset League standings. But a key game between two teams with just one defeat apiece in the division, the Delso Dragons visiting the Valley Vikings. Some 3A love here on Operation Football and the Dragon cheerleaders out there pumping up their team. Valgo was up at the half, 14 to seven, but the Dragons would come back. Kind of like the Game of Thrones, Damani the Bull Wilkes <laughs> is what I'm calling him. And he's, he's thin there, the quarterback. You see him with the RPO. This time is not as much bulldoze and more speed. And, he would tackle himself in the end zone. The turf monster got him. Valley, though, would put up a good fight. Jarrett Zibbit, Vanilla. That is a laser to Monet Pote. Oh. Yeah, I like that name. Touchdown. Yeah. However, the Dragons would blaze the Vikings 43 to 26. After the game, we had to talk to who? Of course, the Bulldozer. 
way we kept the tempo up, you know, our defense stepped up big time. You know, we made some changes on defense, you know, went man. And, you know, we shut down number seven, which was pretty much their best receiver. And on offense, our line was great, wonderful. They did a great job. Right. Yes, they did do a great job. They did the bulldozer. I like it. Yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and give him his nickname. Yeah, why not? He'll take it, right? All right, what else should we give him? Maybe some scoreboards? There you go. Yeah, why not? Back to Operation Football, Jesse Merrick, the man who looks like fine wine over here. Cool. Clean yeah. ass the can Merlot be. suit. <laughs> <laughs> the Merlot suit. That's Cash right. money over here. Okay, I <laughs> there like you it. There you go. All right, we have uh, UNLV football. They played tonight at Fresno. Yeah. We're not going to talk about that. Let's go talk about some more high school. Yeah, football. yeah, let's just hit some highlights and get things rolling, man. You know, Tony's got to give some of the local kids a call. we got a lot of ballers out here. But anyway, like I said, let's get to the highlights on this one. Silverado's got some dudes, too. And with an intro like this right oh, here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, how about that? They got the band and everything. You know they're coming out rolling, looking for their fifth win out of their last six games. And Clark's the squad standing in their way tonight. So with that, let's dive into it. In the first quarter, we're scoreless till Agane Cunningham gets us going. Forget the 40 time right there, Brian. That's speed you can see. Kid makes house calls, and Silverado takes a 7 0 lead. Back on offense, we got more sizzle from Silverado. Brand Tunnel. Hits Jacob Mendez, and that's a gluten-free recipe oh, oh. for disaster. Because my man is handing out tapioca ankles left and right, then hits him with the juice. And guess what, Brian? He's going straight to the crib for I another like touchdown. I like it. As Silverado cruises to the 51-20 win. All right, a couple of teams with loads of talent playing very well in league. The Liberty Patriots hosting a very good Foothill Falcons team that had just one loss on the season, both on two-game winning streaks. And Liberty loving this league. Daniel Britt to Jeremy Bernard. I'm calling it the B to B combination, B double. They hooked up twice in the first half of this game. Look at that, a short and a long pass. That's the Brit right there. All right, the Falcons though, they had a really rough one. This is a, a nice run by Britt, the quarterback, the RPO. He can not only throw the ball, but he can run as well. Look at the speed. I think that 28's got the angle on him, Jesse, but nope. no, no, he's pulling away. He had the extra gear that he threw it into. Yeah, the Falcons had a rough thing of it tonight. You would think that they'd have a touchdown on this play. The quarterback would try to get in. I just actually don't have it. But anyway, yeah, the Falcons would fall to the Liberty Patriots in this game, 38 to zero, and the Patriots looking like New England. Yeah, very much so. Remember when they weren't so hot? All right, you know what? End of Friday, without a look back to Thursday night lights. Canyon Springs visiting Las Vegas, trying to hand the Cats their first loss of the year, up seven nothing in the second. David Braden Ooh. takes the handoff. That sucker slips out of his hands like a greased pig. And check this out, shades of the holy roller out there. And Vegas highs Aaron Franklin gets a hold of it for the touchdown. But just before the half, we got a one-score game. And the Pioneers are looking to knock this one up. DJ Lewis Beelish tips oh, up wow. in the pocket. Whew, let's it rip. And it's right on the money to Tejon Bullock. And after the two-point conversion, we head into the half tied at 14. Vegas jumped out to a 10-point lead in the third. That's till Martin Blake happened. We got a lot going on, so keep up. Hits him with the fancy feet, then goes full cram with the stiff arm oh. and drags another defender into the end zone with him. Kids a one-man wrecking crew. We got a four-point game, but Vegas would pull away after Amir Lopez got the code of the Wi-Fi. And what do you do, Brian? He logged on to bomb.com, 60 bomb. yards of the crib com. as Vegas takes it 37 to 26. Now though, we got to log on to the scoreboard to check out what's going on. We'll be back in just a few. All right, folks, it's time for our favorite segment of the show operation football of operation football obviously it's when yes. the kids step out of the dark and into the spotlight right yeah we get to play the night All let's right, go. Here we go first one from thursday night lights canyon springs it's martin blake here stutter step stiff arm you guys saw it before but you got to check it out again look at this whoa cram and then he just <laughs> drags the kid into the end zone as he dives in 
So nice, what, Brian? You gotta see it you twice, You gotta baby. see it twice. Look at this, man. Wait for the stiff arm. Yeah, the stiff arm's Woo! nice. The cramification man. is nice as well. Then, All right, ah. we have to move on to Silverado and Clark. You know it's cool when a kicker gets on there. Michael Darren boots a 52-yard field goal for Silverado. You gotta like that, huh? Kicker's getting love on Operation Football. Ah, kicker's getting <laughs> love, and our viewers getting love. For Jesse Merrick, I'm Brian Salmon. See you guys next week.